today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at a cloth shader. But before we start wiring nodes together, the first thing that we need to do is take a look at some reference images. We need to look at some real cloth and identify some of the features that make cloth unique from other surfaces. And this will allow us to, to know what we need to do in the shader to, to make a shader that looks like cloth. So let's take a look at some images. So here's an image of some cotton fabric. And one of the key features that you can see is that along the edge, there's a little bit of fuzz sticking out. Can you see these little fibers? What happens with these fibers is that they catch the light as the light passes behind the object and also in front of it, these fibers catch light. And so it makes the surface look like it's lit around the edges, kind of like it has rim lighting. Let's take a look at another image. Here's a picture of some knitted uh, cotton. And you can see again, it has these fibers around the edges and it looks like it's lit on the edges. So there's more lighting on the edges than there is in the middle. Here's an image of some satin. And in this image, you can see that we almost have like the opposite kind of effect. There's more lighting appearing when you're looking directly at the surface and it kind of falls off and gets darker uh, toward the edges. So, so far we've seen that some cloth is more lit on the edges and some cloth is more lit on the middle. Let's take a look at one more. This is an image of some silk. And again, you can see this same effect where more lighting appears to show up when the surface is facing the light or when it's facing the camera than uh, along the edges. So there are two phenomena that we're going to try to imitate here. Uh, one, uh, lighting the edges more than uh, the middle or lighting glancing angles more than the angles that are looking straight at you. And then the other uh, lighting the surfaces that are looking straight at you more than the edges. Okay, I did a little bit of research and we're going to use a technique that was first introduced by John Habel uh, in a talk that he gave at SIGGRAPH about the work that he did for Uncharted 2. So let's take a look at his talk. So here's his, his talk uh, from SIGGRAPH and on slide number 80, you can see that he has a formula here for creating uh, his cloth shader. So this is what we're going to emulate in uh, the Unreal Editor today. I'll put the link to this talk in the description down below. Okay, let's move on and we'll jump right into the shader. There's one more thing that I want to mention before we start putting nodes down, and that is that this technique is not physically correct. What we're going for here is an imitation of the appearance of cloth and not necessarily the actual uh, physical properties of cloth. The reason for that is that if we were to uh, try to emulate the physical properties of cloth, we would have to change the lighting model that Unreal is using. And we're not going to be able to do that just from the node editor. And so for that reason, we're going to create a simple shader that imitates the properties of cloth uh, without actually uh, calculating what light is physically doing. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is use a Fresnel term. And a Fresnel term uh, calculates the dot product between the view vector and the normal of the surface, just like we're doing here. So if I uh, right click and type Fresnel, you can see that there's a node here that creates a Fresnel term. And this does something similar to what we're going to do, but we're not going to use this node uh, because we want to customize it a little bit more. So instead, what I'm going to do is take the camera vector and the pixel normal and do a dot product between the two of those. And I'm going to wire this directly into my base color node and just take a look at what we get. All right, so what you can see here is that our surface is light in the middle and then it falls off and gets darker toward the edges. Our dot product node is basically measuring the angle uh, between the two vectors that we give it. So the camera vector is a line that extends from our eye or from the camera in the scene to the surface. And the pixel normal, of course, is the normal of the surface. So it tells us which direction the surface is pointing. 
So if we measure the angle between these two vectors, uh, we can tell is if, if the surface is pointing directly at us or if it's pointing away from us. So if the surface is pointing away from us, we get a darker shade. And if the surface is pointing toward us, here in the middle, we get a brighter shade. And we can do something kind of interesting with our Fresnel term here. Here I have the one minus X node. And what this does is it inverts the result. So if I wire my dot product into here and wire this into my base color, we're gonna get the opposite of what we got before. So it's gonna be dark in the middle and it's gonna fall off to white on the edges. So this is the foundation for the effect that I'm going for. You can see that with the one minus node attached, I can brighten things on the edges. And if I just bypass the one minus node, I can darken things on the edges. So I have the ability to uh, brighten the middle or brighten the edges. But I do need a little bit more control over this effect. And so I'm gonna add a couple of additional nodes that allow me to um, adjust how much of the effect is being applied. The first thing that I'm gonna do is use a power node. So I'm gonna drag my one minus node up here, and then I'm gonna plug it into my power node that you can see that I have here. And let's just add a constant node. And I'm gonna make this a constant of, uh, let's just give it a constant of six for now. So what this is doing is it's raising my effect to the power of six, and I'm gonna wire that into my base color node, and let's take a look at what happens. Now you can see it's dark in the middle, and it falls off to white right at the very edge, so this fall off is much faster than it used to be. And the higher that I raise my power, if we maybe, make, maybe raise it to a power of 16, the sharper this fall off is gonna be. Now you can see that it's falling off just right along the very edge and it's really sharp. And the lower this power node is, the shallower or softer my fall off is gonna be. So now you can see it's just dark here in the middle and then the fall off happens all the way across the edge. Um, but if I increase my fall off or my power, it's gonna sharpen up the fall off to the very, very edge of the, of the angle. So that's some really nice control to have. I can control uh, how sharp or smooth uh, my fall off is. All right, well, let's set this something to, to something just sort of neutral, like four for now. And I'm gonna add one more control. And this is a multiply. So I'm just gonna wire my power node here into my multiply. And what this will do is allow me to uh, brighten or darken the effect. So I'm gonna copy my constant node here and just wire that into my multiply. And then I'm gonna wire the result of that into my base color and let's see what we get. So here I'm changing the fall off and here I'm changing the brightness. So now you can see toward the edge, it gets significantly brighter. Now I am multiplying by four, but because I'm wiring, wiring this into base color, it never actually gets brighter than one. And so this just uh, changes the amount of the effect that's being applied, um, but it gets clamped at one. All right, so I have two really nice controls. I have a power exponent control and I have a multiply control. But now what I need to do is sort of duplicate uh, this whole structure here so that I can do the same thing, but for the middle. So this, this piece of the shader is controlling the effect on the edges, but I also need to control the effect here in the middle. So I'm gonna take these nodes and duplicate them, place them down here, but you'll remember that I don't wanna use my one minus because I don't wanna invert it. This portion is inverting it, uh, but this portion down here is going to just use it straight up as it was. So let's take a look at what this looks like if I wire this into my base color. So now instead of it falling or getting brighter to the toward the edges, it's getting brighter in the middle. And if I turn my uh, power exponent up here, it's gonna push it into the middle and it's gonna be darker on the edges. 
So this is the kind of effect that I need for my silk where it gets bright in the middle and dark on the edges. And then this is the kind of effect I need for my cotton where it's getting brighter on the edges and, uh, and not in the middle. Okay, now what I can do so that I can use both of these is I'm gonna take my add node here and I'm just gonna add both of them together. And I'm gonna wire this into my base color. And now what you'll see is that I get this effect where it's bright and brightening on the edges and brightening on the middle. And the nice thing about this structure that I've got here is I have these four different controls and using these four controls, I can create all different kinds of cloth effects. Uh, I can create satin and silk and denim and cotton just by adjusting uh, how much fall off there is uh, and brightness there is on the edges and on the middle. So if we let's do something sort of neutral. Let's, let's change all of these to just two. And you'll see that we have something that really looks nothing like cloth, um, but we're forgetting one step, and that is we actually need to use some texture maps. So I'm just gonna come down here and grab these texture maps that I've already added into my scene. And I'm gonna pull this section up. I have my texture coordinates coming in here, and I multiply them by four just so that uh, my texture is tiling a little bit more on my sample sphere here. And I'm gonna take uh, my texture sample. Uh, let's take a look at this really quick. So here's what my texture looks like. And I got this just by scanning uh, some cotton fabric. And you can see there's kind of like a, a weave pattern going on in here. And we can also take a look at the normal map. And so here's my normal map and you can see the the shapes of the of the weave pattern happening here. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, take my Fresnel terms here, uh, my outer Fresnel and my inner Fresnel, and I'm gonna uh, multiply this by the diffuse texture and wire that into the base color socket. And then I'm gonna take my normal map and I'm gonna wire that into the normal. And I'm also going to wire it over here instead of using instead of using the pixels pixel normal of the geometry. I'm now going to use the normal map that I'm getting from the texture. But there is one step that I need to do. I need to transform it uh, into world space. So you can see how this says tangent space to world space. So I'm going to transform my vector here and then plug that into my dot product here. And we'll take a look and see what we get. So you can see here on my cloth, I'm getting some, some brightening on the edges and some brightening in the middle. And it'll make a little bit more obvious if I change my view mode instead of lit, I'm just gonna change this to unlit. Now you can see I've got my cloth bright on the edges and also bright in the middle. And if I play around with this a little bit, I can get something that's a little bit closer to the type of cloth that I'm trying to approximate. For my cotton cloth, I wanna emphasize the fact that the lighting is uh, brighter on the edges because it's lighting those little fibers that are sticking off of the surface. So for my uh, middle Fresnel term, I'm gonna turn down the multiplier to uh, just 1.5 so that that's really subtle. And I'm just gonna make the fall off one. And this will um, basically turn down this middle Fresnel significantly. And then I'm gonna set my uh, the power of my outer Fresnel to three. And I'm gonna set the multiplier to 1.5 just to make it slightly more subtle. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna emphasize uh, the lighting that's on these little fibers around the edges of the cloth. Now I'm going to set this back to uh, lit mode and you can see that I get something that nicely approximates uh, what lighting does with cotton when it catches the, the little fibers around the edges. So this is a pretty decent recreation of what some uh, cotton cloth might look like. Let's try some different textures. So I have some textures loaded in here already for uh, denim and for silk. So let me just find these other ones. I'm gonna use silk. 
And with silk, instead of emphasizing the fall off on the edges, we're going to emphasize uh, the shading that happens in the middle. Silk actually has uh, a little bit of both of these, uh, but you can see that the settings that I've got here for the cotton fabric don't exactly look correct for silk. So let's play with these values a little bit and see if we can get something that looks a little bit more silky. Let's maybe start out by turning up the power of our inner Fresnel to four and also the multiplier to four because we want quite a bit much quite a bit more inner Fresnel and that's going to brighten us up right here quite a bit and then we do want a little bit of outer Fresnel as well some some uh, brightness on the edges so I'm just going to set both of these to four as well and let's take a look at what that gives us all right so we end up with something that looks uh, a lot more like silk cloth so this is a, a really interesting uh, use of shading. We have our Fresnel term and we're inverting it for uh, our outer fall off. And we're just using it straight up for our inner fall off. And then we have these four controls, two for the inner, uh, the inner power and the inner multiply, and then the outer power and the outer multiply. And for each type of cloth that we're trying to imitate, we can just tune these four different values uh, to get different uh, brightnesses on the in, on the edge and also in the middle. And so like I said at the beginning, this isn't uh, a duplication or a, a calculation of what light is actually doing. It's just an imitation of the physical appearance of cloth, uh, allowing you to tune these four values to, to do satin or silk or denim or cloth or, or cotton or, or whatever kind of cloth you want to imitate. Um, it's not a physically correct uh, mathematical formula, but it does allow us to um, imitate the appearance of cloth uh, while still creating a pretty cheap shader uh, that stays within the limits of the lighting model that Unreal Engine provides for us. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you have any questions about cloth shading, you're welcome to post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. As always, if you like the video, hit the like button and be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss next week's Unreal Engine Material Editor tutorial.